Exodus 29, 1-21. This is what you are to do to consecrate them, so they may serve me as priests. Take a young bull and two rams without defect, and from the finest wheat flour make round loaves without yeast, thick loaves without yeast, and with olive oil mixed in, and thin loaves without yeast and brushed with olive oil. Put them in a basket and present them along with a bull and two rams. Then, they, then bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance to the tent of meeting and wash them with water. Take the garments and dress Aaron with a tunic, the robe of the, the, robe of the ephod, the ephod itself and the breastpiece. Fasten the effort on him by its skillfully woven waistband. Put the turban on his head and attach the sacred emblem to the turban. Take the anointing oil and anoint him by pouring it on his head. Bring his sons and dress them in, the, in tunics and fasten cups on them. Then tie sashes on Aaron and his sons. The priesthood is, there, is theirs by lasting ordinance. Then you shall ordain Aaron and his sons, bring the bull to the front of the tent of meeting, and Aaron and his sons by laying their hands on its head. Slaughter it in the Lord's presence at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Take some of the blood and put it on the horns of the altar with your finger and pour out the rest of it at the base of the altar. Then take all the fat on the internal organs, the long lobe of liver and both kidneys with the fat on them and burn them on the altar. Burn the bull's flesh and its hide and its intestines outside the camp. It is a sin offering. Take one of the rams, and Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on its head. Slaughter it, and take the blood and splash it against the sides of the altar. Cut the ram into pieces and wash the internal organs and the legs, putting them in the head and other pieces. Then burn the entire ram on the altar. It is a burnt offering to the Lord, a pleasing aroma, a food offering presented to our Lord. Take the other ram, and Aaron, his sons, shall lay their hands on its head. Slaughter it, take some of its blood, and put it on the lobes of the right ear of Aaron and his sons, on the thumbs of the right hand, and on the big toe on their right feet. Then splash blood against the sides of the altar, and take some blood from the altar and some of the anointing oil, and sprinkle it on Aaron and his garments, and on his sons and their garments. Then he and his sons and their garments will be consecrated. In Jesus' name we read, amen. Please have your seats, if you may. God is very, very detailed, extremely so. When he gives Moses the instructions, he's very detailed in how he wants his things done. God is not haphazard. And everything he does has a reason and a consequence, if not followed. In this instance, he's telling Moses to consecrate these priests, family of priests, Aaron and his sons. And it is theirs for life. Priesthood is theirs as an inheritance. And it's interesting because he says, put blood on his right lobe of the ear and on his thumb and on his big toe. The ear so that he only hears what God is saying doesn't contaminate his thoughts and his heart. And also, what he does must be 
that which is ordained of God. That's why he anoints, consecrates him by putting blood on his thumb and on his toe. And his toe is signifying where he goes, that he will only go that which, where the Lord has ordained for him to go, or for them to go. Now, the ear, which is the title of our message today, the ear, is a door to the heart. The ear is a door to the heart. Now, when a door is unmanned, when you don't have a burglar, when you don't have a lock, when you don't have a security guard, it is unmanned. It means that anyone can come in at whatever point, in whatever state. When people come to your house, they knock. True? What do you normally say before you say, come in? Who is it? So that you agree whether they come in or not. Now, the first battle that man ever lost with the devil in the Garden of Eden was when Eve gave the devil airtime. Eve allowed the devil to speak into her. That's a first defeat for mankind. The ear was the first thing that the devil attacked. First. What kind of relationship did Adam and God have? God created Adam, gave him autonomy in the land. He did whatever he wanted. In fact, God gave Adam instructions that told him, name all the animals. Name all the animals. And whatever you call them, that will be the name that God will call, will know the animals with. It says, Whatever you name them, even I will call them the same. So Adam is the one who named the lion, lion. Later, years later, for God to say that Jesus is a lion of Judah, that name lion, that animal that is depicts of Christ, that name lion was Adam's idea. When God says, snake, you are cast, as God is calling him snake, calling the, the snake snake, that name was given by Adam. It was Adam's idea that this would be a snake, this would be called lion, this would be a bull, this would be a camel, a horse. It is Adam who named them. And because he did, God calls those animals by that name to date. So that's the kind of relationship they had. But God told him and Eve, do not touch that fruit nor eat it. But everything else is at your disposal, as you desire, as you wish. Fruit and animal on the land, except that one. So the devil shows up and he asks Eve a question. He didn't lie. He just asks. He used facts that were right. Now the serpent in Genesis chapter 3, listen to this conversation. They're having a conversation. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from the tree in the garden of Eden? Did God really say? And listen to this conversation. Eve responds to the question. Because he, the devil didn't come, the, the serpent didn't come and say, you know, God didn't say. You know what you're thinking is not true? No, he did not discount it. He just asked, did he say this? Did he say that you should not eat or touch? Did he listen to Eve's response to the enemy? 
Verse 2, the woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say. So Eve repeats verbatim what God says. You must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. You must not touch it or you will die. That is the response that Eve gives to the question asked by the serpent, the snake who the devil had indwelled. Listen to what he continues to say. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. He creates, the, the devil now, here, the serpent creates an appetite for the unknown. He creates an environment where he creates an appetite. He creates an, an appetite. Now she wants to prove. Allah, okay, uh, let me see. So by the time the fruit is presented, she's already in the box. Now, how does that work in today's life? Now, God says, I hate gossip. But how many times do people come and say, by the way, umeskia? Ati? Kwani ujui? Nini? Waifi anani? What do you mean you don't know? You don't know the husband did? There's even a video. Ati nini? Yebu nitumia? See, that's how it starts. Do you? Umesikia. Ati alichapa nani? Nani? Uyo pasta na vile uwa meokoka? Ah, wacha kuni enjoy. What are you saying? Ebu kuja ni kuambie. Then you take leave from work. Excuse me, I have a family emergency. I'll be back at about three. Ebu tuwendo niambie history wewe. Ati ebu niambie vizuri. Who are you talking about? Situ lukumona ye. You mean there is, there is trouble in paradise? <laughs> Mbaka unabai wa lunch. Ati nini? Ebu kuja kwaza ukuleka lunch. Ndiyo nipati yeo story vizuri. So, you see, you have already been set up. The appetite has been created. Umeskia. Nini? What do you mean, aujui? Kusini beste yako? Sikuwa za we muna kuwagana ye perpetually. Nani? We, wacha kuni enjoy. Kama utai kuni ambia ukai. Sawa. Ah, 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 sikuwa na ubaya. Na uliza, ha? So that by the time the fruit is presented, oh, you are... Dying to eat it. Eve did not eat the fruit because she did not know or she had forgotten that God had said this one is forbidden. The appetite for it had been created. The appetite for that which is forbidden had already been created. That's why she ate. And even when Adam showed up in the picture, I'm sure he was shocked. Eve, aje, kutuangusha nao. Si God alisema, atia pana, wacha ni kuambie, nini? He, unajua hii fruit suwe mbotu sikule? He, ati ukikula, ata uwezi kufa, what do you mean? Yani God aneza kuwana to enjoy. Iko, ndiyo kusapu mkula, he. Ati ya tuto kufa? Na si alisema tu sikula? Ah, mina kuambia ukweli, aduda kufa, nane, ndiyo vile ni meambiwa, ati. Shortly, we are naked. You see, friends, there are two attitudes that the devil knows. They have worked like clockwork over the years. The first one is doubt. Create doubt in the heart of a man. Somebody knows that you love your wife to bits. Then they come and plant doubt. You see this picture, eh? See, your wife has a red blouse, eh? This guy who's kissing this chick. 
See, they are wearing a red blouse, eh? but the face is not clear. This must be your wife. They have already planted doubt. How many red blouses are there? They've already planted doubt. What do you think the objective for that person is? Not everything you hear is true. Friends, the, over the 20-something years, and every pastor here, including Pastor Moturi, Mutinda, who's in charge of our marriage ministry, and every pastor here can bear me witness. Every time a couple comes to my office, and there are several times where couples have, spouses have come into my office, and they have described their spouse, and by the time they are leaving, I am so angry, I am convinced that wild animals no longer live in the wilderness, but in our homes. You know, somebody can be described in your presence, for sure, if you meet that person after the service, you can't even greet them because you are not in the business of greeting wild animals. Then you call the, the other spouse and say, Ebu, come. I met with your wife or your husband and what I've heard, Ebu, come. They come and sit there. They tell you a story, and now you realize why there is a problem in this marriage. Because there are two wild animals. And then you call both of them so that each can say what they said in front of the other. And they leave major details out of it. So you're wondering. You mean, that's when the truth comes out when they are both there. And that's when you wonder, Allah, you mean. <laughs> you see, friends, this person and the story they have told, they have told several other people. They have told their parents, their friends, and anyone who's willing to listen. And so, in the eyes of the public, all and sundry, this person is a wild animal. And this one so. So by the time they are coming to reconcile, no one can stand that marriage. No one can stand those people. Because they are two wild animals. But you see, the Bible reminds us that do not create an opinion until you hear the other side of the story. And every time someone is presenting their peace, I always remind myself, don't get angry. Don't swallow it in whole. Wait until you hear the other side of the story. Ngojea. This might not be true. I'm not saying it is, but you wait until you hear the other side of the story. Because there's two sides to every coin. And it has really helped me in my counseling in my office. And let me tell you something, friends. By the time the fruit is presented, <laughs> the devil knows that you will eat it whole because there is already appetite. Doubt. Doubt. It destroyed and stole from them. They were kicked out of the Garden of Eden, not because they had forgotten. They knew exactly what the Lord had said, but doubt was planted in their heart and mind. The other one, the other dangerous perspective is fear. First one is doubt, the second one is fear. And the devil has used both to the max, and it works without fail. Joshua chapter 5 and verse 1. Joshua chapter 5 and verse 1. The children of Israel have just crossed the Jordan. Listen to what Joshua writes. All the Amorite kings who lived across the Jordan to the west and all the Canaanite kings by the Mediterranean Sea became discouraged. 
as soon as they had that the Lord had dried up the water of the Jordan River for the people of Israel until they had crossed it. They no longer had a will to fight because of the people of Israel. Now, let's look at it in perspective. The children of Israel are getting into Canaan. Now, Canaan is not desolate. Canaan is already occupied. There are people and nations there. The Amorite kings, the Canaanite kings along the Mediterranean. It's beautiful land. It's by the Mediterranean. It's a fresh water lake. So people fight for access to bodies of water because it means wealth and prosperity. The children of Israel are coming. The nation is occupied. The Lord parts the Jordan at flood stage. The people here, the kings, the Amorite kings here of the exploits. And the Canaanite kings also here. Remember, this is their homeland. This is where they have buried their ancestors. This is their home where their wives and their children live. This is their inheritance. But when they hear what God has done for the Israelites, they are so discouraged that they are not willing to fight for their wives, their children, and their land, and their homes, and their nations. They are so discouraged that the Bible says here that they no longer had a will to fight for their homes, for their children, for their wives, for their wealth, and for their land. They were not willing to fight and defend it because fear had gripped their heart because of what God had done for the Israelites. Fear, fear can cripple you. Fear is crippling. Who are you listening to and what are they saying? You see, somebody will come and tell you a story of how a friend of yours started a business and it failed flat and they were auctioned and now, and then the wife left and now the man and the children are destitute. It's at that point that the Lord has been speaking to you about quitting your job and establishing your business. But when you hear that story, fear grips you so much that you, you don't quit. You see, their failure is their story. Don't own their story. Don't own their testimony. You don't know why their business failed. Oh, people don't, should not marry from this tribe. The women in that tribe are bad. Huyo ni bibiyake huyo. Not all the women in that tribe are bad. It is just that one. Hallelujah. Don't own their testimony. It is theirs, not yours. You live your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You live your life. Remember, where you seated right now, your life, your wife, your marriage, your wealth, the devil is looking for somebody to devour. You might not think it's much, but if you lost it, you'll be shocked. It will hurt like mud. And the devil is looking for somebody to devour. So take care. Do not leave the door unmanned. And this is a door to the heart. Do not leave it unmanned. 90% of the people who have been talking to you the last 10 days talk to you about someone else. 90% of the people talking to you in the last 10 days, if you sit down and write 10 people you've interacted with, you've shared with, chances are they were talking to you about someone. If you have nothing good to say about someone, then you have no business talking about them. 
If you cannot repeat it in their presence, then don't say it in their absence. Hallelujah. And it takes spiritual maturity for you to say, I don't want to know. Do you know? No, I don't. And I don't want to know. How do we? How do we? Nastaki kuskia ndugu. Buwana kubariki. Nastaki ku? For you to say those words, they sound simple. Mtu wapikuja, nilikuwa na uliza tutakutana sangapi kwa nini? Kwa nini ujasikia? Just at that point where you say, I don't want to hear. I don't want to, to hear. Now that takes the hand of God. Because the desire to know. Ooh-wee. Believers have a propensity to listen to gospel, to gossip. That is the bait the devil uses to put in the two most hurtful attitudes in the human heart. Doubt and fear. And both destroy, kill, or steal your dream or your life if you can get to it. Friends, we who of the household of faith must be above reproach. When somebody tells you a story, they must know that you will hold them accountable. You ask them, can I call this person to confirm what you've told me? There are people who've told me stories and when I ask, can I call them and confirm? Apana, 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 staki wajue ni mimi. Apana usuwolize, ah, apana suweza kajue ni mimi nilisema yo story. So I'm wondering, why? Is it because part of that story is not true? Or you had no business saying that story because it was told to you in confidence? If you cannot repeat what you've said in their presence, then you have no business saying it in their absence. Because every con- God is a silent listener to every conversation. And remember, you will be held accountable for every careless word that comes out of your mouth. There are people who will go to hell, not because they were not born again, not because they did not serve, but because they were careless with the words of their mouth. Your words will send you to hell. May the Lord have mercy on us. Have you ever seen how bold we get when we are talking, when the person is not there? Mina kuambia uyo waifa kikuja, atajua mindi omona ume. Na kuambia ukweli. Karo, tutaonana. Mina kuambia wacha akuja. Atajua uku, mimi ndi ovatrao. Akwezi enda ivo. Na wambia ukweli. Mina wambia. Eh? Ngoja akuje. Oh, sasa shiro. <laughs> hey, umekua? <laughs> hey, buntekezeka chai. Sasa, ile story. Story gani? Ah, hakuna story, hakuna story. <laughs> Mwana ume. When you are not there, how you hit your chest. Eh? Hey? My sister, how you say uo mjama ataona na meno. <laughs> Mama yangu. Wacha niende home atanikuta. Woi, daddy. Sasa. <laughs> when they are not there. Hallelujah. They're not there syndrome. They're not there syndrome. Unajipiga kifua na wewe ni mdeadly saleha wako. Na saleha wamekuja. And some of you will follow on the footsteps of people who beat their chest in the absence of the other people. Yet, when they go home, that's not what they do. Who are you listening to? Who are you allowing yourself to listen to? Because when you hear, you will form an opinion. That's the truth. You cannot be innocent after you have heard. You will form an opinion. Once you have heard. So take care and make sure that you guard your heart and your ears through that door. Because if it is unmanned, you will create an opinion. Whoever becomes president in this country, my friend, it won't add bread on your table. Maisha ni yale? Yale. Bidi ni wewe. 
Mafuta hata ikuwe miambili. Bidini wewe. Whether uta drive ama uta tembea. Bidini wewe. Zizi zerekali. Buwana sifu sana. So watch. Watch what you say and what you hear. This is not a propaganda. Ndajenga barabara. Nitawalete ya mawingu wapa chini. Nitamekshua hata jua hita kuchoma. Nitawalete ya stima mbaka kwa choo. Iyo stima kama una pesa uwezi lipa. We ngangano usakaja ulipe stima. <laughs> Usingoje ya kuletewa. Jilipia ikuje kwako. Bidi. Buwana asfiwe. Friends. I was where you are. There's a season where I hit I had bona fide enemies in the other camp. We hata atusalimiani. Hata nikiomba na wafunga. Na maombi. I would pray those buga buga prayers. Usiku suwezi lana na onakura zikiesabiwa na calculator. Na in tanks. Baba hapa wanatuibia. Wanatuibia hapa. Ngoja za tharakanifi zingie ndiyo wajue tuko. Shantere kakabokonta rakasho. Seriously. Ningelala tu. Wametuibia mbaka barabara hapa njia kanisa. Hata awana adabu. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. Watch out. Watch out. That you don't lose your life, your relatives, your marriage, your children, your friends. On account of another, there will be Kenya after we are gone. If you die, there will still be Kenya. Buana sphere. Eve listened to the enemy. It looked innocent. <laughs> Shortly, she was eating the fruit that she had said. God said we do not eat this one. She didn't know when she was eating it. So even you, watch when you stand, lest you fall. May the Lord have mercy on us. On Saturday, here, we come to cry and pray that God will forgive us as a nation, that God will forgive us as families that God will forgive us as a church, as individuals, that he will take away this, this, this virus from us, that he will spare our lives, because at this point, friends, all is not well. And God is all we have in Jesus' name. Let's stand on our feet. Father, have mercy on us. Father, I pray that you will minister to us. I pray, O oh God, that we shall find you and see you. I pray that you will bless your people this morning, this afternoon. That you will meet them at their point of need. The Lord, you will bless the works of their hands. That you will grant them peace and joy in their homes. That Jehovah, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you would heal your people in the name of Jesus. The Lord, as we live today, that this week when we meet on Sunday, we'll have a testimony that God has been with me, that God has provided for me greatly, that God has met this and the other need. Lord, that you would have testimonies of people who have led others to Christ. The Lord will come and share that I led this person to Christ. I had an opportunity to witness to another. Jehovah, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you will rule and reign. Rule and reign our thoughts, our hearts, our nation, and the church of Jesus Christ that meets a river of God. Father, thank you that you have preserved our lives. Grant us strength to serve I pray that we shall not get tired to stand with those who are mourning during this difficult season. Even to stand with those who are in hospital. Because it is a difficult time. And I believe that you will bless us as we do. Father, I dedicate your people back to thee. In the name of the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we all said, I know there are many people who have passed on, but don't get tired in helping and giving, helping with the funeral services. Don't say zimekuwa nyingi. Just help. Let them see God in you. May the Lord renew your strength to stand with people in Jesus' name. Usichoke kuenda hizo mazishi. Usichoke. But protect yourself. We have a mandate to minister, but we have a responsibility to take care of ourselves. As you live today, may the Lord shine his face upon each one of you. May none, may his favor be evident over your life. May none of your bones ever be broken. May that which is yours that the devil has taken or touched, may our God in heaven pay you back a hundredfold. May the peace of God that surpasses human understanding keep your hearts. May the joy of the Lord be your portion. May that joy fill and saturate every inch of your home. Remember you have the power of life and death on your tongue. Choose to declare life. Declare life over the issues that surround your life, over the nation of Kenya, the nation of Israel, and as the Lord may lead you. And on every road you travel on, declare that on this road today, no one will lose their life or have their property destroyed. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Go with God. And may he be with you. Amen.